Nobody wants to admit it, but there's a big problem with the average Sunday schools in our churches. And it's not just in America, but all around the world. Now, before you start throwing stones and give me a thumbs down on this video, hear me out. Before we get started though, if you want to see more videos like this on the subject of kids ministry, please hit the subscribe button below along with the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Hey, I'm not against Sunday school. It's had a major positive impact on children for decades and we can all point to stories of lives changed as a result. But I am against the way most Sunday schools teach their kids. What do I mean? Well, as a whole, what we as Christian churches have been doing for the spiritual education and discipleship of children, and our youth by the way, has not produced spiritual growth and development the way it should have. And in most cases, we just cannot look at our kids and teenagers and see true spiritual maturity in their lives. You know what? Sadly, a lot of Christians don't even expect it. Now you may or may not be aware of the fact that we're losing our kids from the church. As many as 70% of them are walking away after growing up in our Sunday schools and they have no interest in coming back. Cold, hard, fact. There are so many surveys from many sources that confirm this. It's not just my opinion. The church as a whole has only seen our children after the flesh and not after the spirit. And as a result, we have not truly equipped them to walk in the word of God or the power of the spirit. And that's what discipleship is. Just telling Bible stories over and over again is not discipleship. Come on. Now, if you agree with me, type, I agree in the comments below. And on top of that, in too many of our Sunday schools, we've reduced our Bible stories to little more than Aesop's fables. We tell these great stories and then we end it with, and the moral of the story, boys and girls, is don't lie, don't cheat, be kind to one another, never fear, and never give up. Phil Vischer, the creator of the beloved Veggie Tales videos, which were highly creative variations of traditional Bible stories for kids, were just like that. He himself said he now regrets teaching kids morality over the Bible. Phil said, I looked back and realized I had spent 10 years trying to convince kids to behave Christianly without actually teaching them Christianity. And that was a pretty serious conviction. You can say, hey kids, be more forgiving because the Bible says so or hey kids be more kind because the Bible says so but that isn't Christianity that's morality Ben Shapiro the popular conservative commentator and Orthodox Jew said one of the things that has happened in the religious communities is you see people who are brought up in religious homes and they've been taught the stories of the Bible but they are never taught any deeper philosophy or theology that attaches to that so when they grow up they still have a child's view of what God is and how they still think about God they still sort of think of God as the old man in the, the sky who's controlling things he gets it and he's Jewish now I'm not saying let's don't tell Bible stories anymore, but along with them, we have to go deeper. There are too many kids growing up in church and even Christian homes who just do not know the Bible at all beyond these stories. We call that biblical illiteracy. And today's generation is the most biblically illiterate generation in modern history. Were you aware of that? Type yes or no in the comments below. Now I've been saying for a long time, when it comes to our Sunday schools, the church is stuck as a whole in what I call a 200 year old wineskin. What do I mean by that? Sunday school was birthed in the mid 1800s. That's about 200 years ago. Interestingly enough, in the very beginning, Sunday schools used to go much deeper with kids by having them read large portions of the Bible every week and then take them through catechisms, which were summaries of the principles of Christian religion and in the form of questions and answers. They taught church and biblical doctrine to street urchins. There was a radical reformation in those societies in those days because of this. Now, I'm not sure when it changed, but it was fairly quickly when a variety of Sunday school unions stepped in and started setting down policies for their denominations. And it wasn't long before the powers that be decided that the only thing kids could understand were the Bible stories. 
Since then, we have all pretty much continued to teach kids in our churches the same way. Just teaching the same basic stories over and over again and never going any deeper into God's Word or Christian doctrine. Thus my statement that our Sunday schools are 200 year old wineskins and it's just not enough for kids today. True story. Kids are leaving the church when they become teenagers thinking they know everything there is to know about God and the Bible and have no further need for going to church. Why? Because they've never heard anything more than the same Bible stories over and over again. But it's even more than that. If you haven't noticed, today's generation of children are highly engaged in activities way beyond their years in our typical thinking. They want to do everything. They want to be involved in everything. They live to go beyond the expected norms in music, arts, sports, gymnastics, education, science, dance, acting, and so much more. If you will, the old wineskin of culture said kids couldn't do hard things. They had to stay in their lane and only engage in the really challenging things when they got older. But the new wineskin of culture says there are no limitations to what children can do. But unfortunately, that thinking has not seeped into the church. So what does the old wineskin look like in the church, more specifically Sunday schools? Number one, there's no anointing in our kids' services. It's not even a consideration. We never even think about whether there should be an anointing in Sunday school or not. Number two, there's no move of the Holy Spirit. There's no spiritual encounter with the living God except once in a while we offer them salvation or to pray for them when they're very sad. It's really hard to have a move of the Spirit when everybody's sitting around tables and, and kicking each other under the chairs and shooting spit wads when the teacher isn't looking. It's not impossible, but it's rare. Then, as I've said, number three, it's because there's no deeper feeding of God's Word than the stories, and the teaching stays spiritually shallow. And that is kid's code for boring. Now, I recognize we're in a new era where the majority of kids in the world have never heard any of the Bible stories, so there is still a great need for them. However, whether kids have never heard them before and are hearing them for the first time, or whether we're teaching kids that have grown up in Sunday school and have heard them a hundred times, there's still some major changes we need to consider to capture the hearts of our kids for the kingdom of God. You see, kids are hungry for the presence of God. They're hungry for a touch from God. Their little minds are hungry for more challenging information that cries out, give me a greater reason for believing in God in the Bible than Jonah and the whale. And they want to be a part of a bigger story. They want to be a part of what God is doing in the world today and not just hear the grown-ups talking about it. So if that's the old wineskin, then what's the new wineskin of children's ministry? Well, the new wineskin consists of three vital elements. Write them down. Number one is meat, number two is equipping, and number three is presence. Now let me explain. Meat. This means we need to be teaching kids the meat of God's Word. It's giving them solid food, that is, doctrine. We say in our ministry, kids cannot live by Bible stories alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We as Christians don't just believe the Bible is a good book. We believe Hebrews 4.12, that the Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing the soul and spirit and judges the thoughts and intents of the heart. We need to embed God's Word in the minds of our children for this reason. It's in our Sunday schools and in our homes where we need to ground them in the Word of God, making Bible concepts and principles a part of our everyday conversations because without a knowledge of God's Word, they're so easily talked out of their faith in our culture. Number two, equipping. Ephesians 4, 12 through 16 talks about the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. What's fascinating is it tells us that this is exactly what needs to take place for the maturing of the saints so we can measure up to the full and complete stature of Christ. Then we'll no longer be immature like children, children who can be tossed and blown around by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever that they sound like the truth. Therefore, if we're going to properly disciple children and see them mature in their faith, we need to be equipping them for the work of the believer's ministry. Now, what is that? 
It's teaching them to do what Jesus said, walking in signs and wonders as a daily lifestyle. The assumption is, if anyone is a follower of Christ, regardless of age, they need to be equipped and discipled to follow Jesus. In case you haven't noticed, this is a hands-on generation. They're no longer satisfied to sit in a chair behind a table and just listen to us talk. They want to get out of their chairs and do something. The kids in this generation are being taught to be activists. They're going to save the rainforest. They're going to save the planet from global warming. They're going to raise money to dig wells for poor people in Africa who don't have water. So we can either let the world teach them to save baby wells, or we can teach them to save souls. The choice is ours. But they will get involved in something. And if there's no room for them in the church, they'll go where they can be used and fully embraced. So what does this look like in our churches? Well, we need to teach kids to hear God's voice. They need to know how to be led by His Spirit, how to pray deeper prayers than just a simple, God bless mommy and daddy and my dog Spot. They can be taught intercessory prayer, how to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, and how and why they should pray in tongues, how to heal the sick, how to operate in the gifts of the Spirit, how to prophesy, and so much more. And we as church leaders need to teach their parents to work on these things at home. It's not enough for kids just to experience them once or twice a month at church. And most parents have no idea how to disciple their kids. We need to help them. Number three, the new wineskin is all about the presence of God. Kids need to encounter His presence. They must have their own personal encounters with Him in order to take ownership of their faith. They cannot live on their parents' experiences. They need to know for themselves that God is real. Did you know that over half of the children who've grown up in our churches tell us, to their knowledge, they've never felt God's presence nor heard His voice? If children do not have their own encounters with God, they're left with religion without relationship, and all they have is head knowledge with no heart knowledge. If this is true, God will never be real to them, and we will lose them for sure. How is it even possible that children can be raised in a spirit-filled church and walk away and claim they've never felt His presence? We need to be creating opportunities every week for kids to experience the presence of God in our children's ministries. This is where we take time out in our services to specifically spend time in the presence of the Holy Spirit. But it's not even on our radar in most cases that this is something children need, much less become proactive in, in providing those times of intimacy with the Lord. These are all issues I have with traditional Sunday school. No meat, no training or discipling, no equipping of the little saints, and no presence of God on any regular basis. So ask yourself, is the Sunday school that your children attend the old wineskin or the new wineskin because it matters? If you've learned anything from this video and you want to hear more, click the subscribe button. Also visit our online store and take advantage of our teaching materials available for parents and church leaders on this topic and many others. Then share this with your friends. Thanks for watching.